These are OneNote's top 10 essential features, including my favorite tips and tricks for smarter organization. We are going to learn how to link our notes, add loop components, shortcut keys, and so much more. So with that being said, let's nerd out. Tip number one is how we can link our notes to either documents or web pages that we are taking notes on. Just like we have here, when we hover this over, we can see that this is linked to a PowerPoint presentation. At Amy's Animal Shop, we are planning our end of summer bash. So I want to take some notes from this PowerPoint presentation. Back in OneNote, we can go up to view and then dock to desktop. And you'll notice that that PowerPoint presentation automatically appeared. So that's because it was the last app that I was using before I opened up the docked window. So just keep that in mind when you are using this feature. Now, the great thing about the docked window is that you can easily adjust your notes page and then that's going to automatically update the other application that you have open. And a little bonus trick, if you hover over these three dots at the top and then hold them for just about a second and then drag this to the top, we can change the orientation here. So. I personally prefer the vertical layout, so I'm going to once again hold that for about a second and then drag it over to the right. We are going to now link these OneNote notes to our PowerPoint presentation. On the right hand side of this OneNote docked window, we have this linked note taking is enabled. So we want this to be turned on. Mine is turned on by default, but if yours is turned off, then you can select the carrot and then you would see a turn on this feature from the drop down, And to start to link our notes, we can simply start typing. So I like Rue's skirt. And we'll notice here that this little PowerPoint icon has appeared and that is the automatic link to either the document or the web page that you are taking notes on. And it even includes a little snippet of the slide that this is referencing, which is super handy. So let's go down and now take a note on this slide, fun. And we can see that that has once again linked that snippet of notes and even added a screenshot of that slide in the PowerPoint presentation. Now, once your notes are in there, we will have some additional options at the top right. So if we select the drop down, then you can go to linked files and this is going to show you all of the files or documents that you have linked to this notes page. If you wanted, you could like delete all of the links that are on this page. You could turn off this feature or you even have some additional settings. So if we expand those and we're in the OneNote options advanced and we can scroll on down linked notes. So here we can allow the creation of new linked notes. So this is where you would just turn this off or turn it on if you wanted to. And then that save the document snippets and page thumbnail. So that is what this is here. Since mine is on, it's automatically taking that little snippet so that I can visualize where those notes are from. Now let's expand out of this docked window by just clicking these arrows here. Now the great thing about these notes is that when we click on this PowerPoint presentation, then it's going to open it up and it's going to take us precisely to that slide that we were working on. This also works for when you want to take notes from one notebook to the other within OneNote. So in this case, we're going to go new docked window we're going to see a similar setup here, but now we have our note taking page as well as OneNote on the left hand side. Then we can just simply navigate to a different notebook. Here we can see that we have some marketing materials for that pool party. Then we're just going to start to take some notes and we can see how that OneNote is now showing that little icon to show that it is linked to this notebook. Tip number two is how we can organize our pages with templates. So we can head up to the insert tab and then go to page templates. From this drop down, you are going to have access to all of the recent templates that you have selected, or you can go to page templates and this will open up the templates navigation area. So we can expand these drop downs here and select the different templates that are already built into OneNote, or you can even create your own templates and those will appear under my templates. I've done a whole other video that I've linked in the description if you would like to know more. Once you've defined your template, then you can simply just start to type in your notes and then that is going to be now that designated template for that page. And there is one key thing here that I want to show you that will make your notes consistent. So at the bottom, it says always use a specific template. So let's select a template to use 
each time that we start a new page in this print section. So once that is defined, then now we can go to add page and we'll notice that template has already been pre-populated. Tip number three is the new Sticky Notes app and it can be accessed from OneNote on the desktop on the top right hand corner here. So if we select Sticky Notes, then the app will appear. There's a couple of little things that I want you to do before we dive in. Firstly, let's select the ellipses and just make sure that you are signed in to the correct account. This will ensure that your sticky notes sync across all of your devices. And at the bottom here, we have this dock to desktop, which is that similar view that we saw earlier. Lastly, if you want to take your sticky notes with you, then you can just scan this QR code. Now that we have access to sticky notes, let's see it in action. We are going to go up to screenshot and take a screenshot of these dogs on the slip and slide. Now you're going to notice that this has automatically linked this screenshot to this page within my notebook. So it's very similar to what we saw earlier. And it's very important to note this link and the screenshot are going to connect whatever you clicked on last. So this is very important if you have multiple screens. So I have just clicked on my YouTube channel that's open on my other screen. And now if I click screenshot, and it's going to reference that page and take a screenshot of that screen. So it's just wherever you click blast before you hit screenshot, that's what it's going to connect. The great thing with these screenshots is that we're not just limited to a screenshot. We can click on the note and that is going to open up an area where we can add text as well as some rich formatting or even bullet points to the bottom there. So this is a great way to connect your little notes to your screenshots. Now, this time I'm going to select a Microsoft loop page on my other computer screen and we are going to select notes. So you can see that this is now linked to that browser page that I have just clicked on. And if you are enjoying this video, then please consider giving it a thumbs up as it really helps me out. And then we can even add some bullet points to subscribe to my channel. You'll notice how this one is a blue sticky note. So we can change these to whatever color you would like, which is by selecting these ellipses. And then we have a whole assortment of colors. Color coat them just like you did with all those post-it notes back in the day. Now this one, we selected note, but we still have the option to take a screenshot. So we can attach one screenshot to every sticky note. So if you see the screenshot grayed out, then it could just be that you've added one already. Now, really cool thing with sticky notes is that it is really smart. So I'm going to click on this OneNote page. We are going to see how the sticky notes has now bumped up that sticky note to the top. If I go back to this loop page, then we can see that that sticky note has bounced to the top again. So it's always going to prioritize the sticky note for whatever area you are working on, which is so cool. And we can even search for our sticky notes. So I'm going to search for that thumbs up and it even recognizes emojis, which is super cool. Tip number four is how we can draw using a stylus in OneNote. Now this is a huge benefit of using OneNote over other apps such as Microsoft Loop. So let's head up to the draw tab. Now, before I start to use my stylus, I will always add some lines to my page. So under this format background, then we can add some lines and there's one little feature here select the drop down again then we can go to always create pages with rule lines so this is similar to using those page templates and then always defining that template for when you add a new page which could be a good option for you if you do plan to use stylus when we are ready to start drawing then we can just go up to these drawing tools i'm going to select this navy blue pen and then from the drop down i'm just going to change the color here then now we can start to write on our page. So I am just going to write pause and then toast because these dogs are having a cute little marshmallow party at the Hawaiian party. And I just want to add a little bit more text here so that you can see something in a moment. Another great thing about the drawing tools is that if you want to draw some shapes, you can just start to draw it and then just hold it at the end and it snaps into shape, which just makes for some really nice, pretty shapes compared to what you would normally draw. And a really good thing about the drawing tools is that 
My text here is not really that easy to read, but if I start to search for toast, then we can see that it even searches for that text. Now, what if we want to change this text from my chicken scratch into something that is legible? We can head up to the select little icon on the top left. And this is a little trick. So if we click on pause, double click, then it selects the whole row. Click for a third time, then it's going to select all of the text on this page. I'm going to deselect that, but I'm going to do one, two, select all of that text, and then we can head up to this ink to text at the top here, and we'll see that that has converted it to really nice legible handwriting. I'm going to press Control Z to undo that. Now, what if we want to erase some of this text? We could go up to the eraser tool here, but it would be much easier if we could just scribble on top of the text and then delete it that way. And a new feature in OneNote, if we get up to the select icon, then we can select this image and you're going to notice that all of the text on top of that image is also selected. So if we move this image, then the text moves with it. This is great if you're annotating PDF and um, before it got separated, so this just keeps everything together. One of my favorite ways to organize my notes is tip number five, which is tags. So here we are planning this end of summer bash. The dogs are having a great time in their Hawaiian outfits. So under the home tab, under tags, beside choosing the venue, I want to add a to-do tag. And this has now added a little checkbox that we can literally check or uncheck. Then for the selecting date, this is very important. We can't have a party without a date. So I wanna add this important one, which is actually the shortcut is control two. So I'll go control two on my keyboard and we can see that tag has been added. Now, if we select this drop down, we have a whole bunch of tags here and the first nine tags have the shortcut keys, control one, two, three, and so on. You can go down to the bottom here and customize these however you want. But what I really like about the tags is the ability to search them. So we can now head up to the find tags and we'll see this new tag summary appear. So you can group the tags by title. At the bottom here, we can even narrow down our search to like this page or this section or this notebook. So when you have tags throughout multiple notebooks and sections, then this will provide a summary of whatever you search for and filter here. Then at the bottom, which is my favorite, we select create summary page, then all of your tags are gonna be summarized in one page. So this will just bring everything together in harmony. Tip number six is how we can use Copilot in OneNote. So if we go control A, A to select everything, going to right click, Copilot, and then summarize. So we can see that Copilot has now generated a summary, which is a direct summary of the contents on this page. Once again, I'm going to select all of this text, right click it, Copilot. This time I'm going to create a to-do list. Then here, Copilot has now extracted what it thinks are going to be action items from these contents. And then now this time, I'm going to select just this text, right click it, Copilot, and then rewrite. And here we can see that Copilot has now taken that text and it has rewritten it to make it flow better, which is a great way to pull all of your random thoughts and put it into one nice cohesive paragraph. These three features are just a scratch of the surface of what we can do in Copilot. We haven't even touched this Copilot button on the top right. Use Copilot, you do need an additional subscription. And if you are interested in learning more, then I'll include another video link in the description of this one. Tip number seven is shortcut keys. This is a hot topic for OneNote, so I know that you'll be excited. Now to add a new page, we'll go Control N. Now you'll notice that this popped the page at the bottom of this section. We can easily drag it and drop it to whatever location that you want. But what I find super helpful is if we wanna add a page between these two pages, then you'll notice this little plus icon appear on the right-hand side. So if we just select that, then it's going to insert that page right where you specified it to be added. If we go Control Shift Alt N, then that is going to add a sub page to the page that you were already on 
or if we go control T, then that is going to add a new section to your notebook. Now this one might be a little less common, but if we highlight the word venue and then go shift F7, then a thesaurus is going to pop up on the right hand side, providing us with alternative words. And then these are some common ones when you were working on pages. So go control forward slash to start a numbered list, or you can go control period to start a bullet list. Now, I often like to organize my content in tables. So if we start enter the word table, then you can tab, tab through for the number of columns that you want to add and then press enter to add a new row. And last but not least, if we go Windows Alt 7, then that brings up the new Sticky Notes app. And for those of you that are looking for a summary of these shortcuts that I've just gone through, then you can take a screenshot of this page. Tip number eight is advanced features for file printout. So let's go up to the insert tab and select file printout. Here I'm going to select a Word document and we'll have a link to this document in the OneNote page as well as a printout of these pages. Now there are a lot of pages here, so it's a little bit difficult to navigate. And these pages are also stuck in the background. So let's take a look at some advanced options that we have. We go up to file and go down to options, advanced, and then we're going to need to scroll all the way down to the bottom here. And here we have insert long printouts on multiple pages and automatically set insert file printouts in the background. So I'm going to deselect this and then click OK. Now, if we add a new page and we can go file printout like the same document and you can see how we now have this end of summer bash page and then all of these some pages. So all of those pages from that Word document are now on their own page within this OneNote page and subsections. Additionally, we are now able to move these images around. So previously they were all set to the background, which is totally fine, like whatever your preference is. But circling back to that draw tab, if we select the pen icon, if you haven't already, then please consider giving my video a thumbs up as it really helps me out. We can click on the select and then now, once again, we can annotate those PDFs or those Word documents as file printouts and the stylus moves with the image. Now, if you only want, say, some pages to be set to the background and some not to be, then what we can do is just right click on any of these pages and you'll see at the bottom here that it says set picture as background. So if we select that, then it's now stuck in the background. But if to undo that, we can just go set pictures background again. And then now we can easily move that page. Tip number nine is how we can embed Excel spreadsheets into OneNote. Let's go up to insert. This time we're going to go to spreadsheet and I'm going to select existing Excel spreadsheet. Select the file that you want to insert. And then here you're going to have some additional options. So you can either just attach the file, insert the spreadsheet, or you can insert a specific chart or table if your file has one. I'm just going to go ahead and select insert spreadsheet and we'll see that this spreadsheet has been added, which is amazing. Now, if we want to edit this, we can just simply press edit and that is going to open up the Excel file. Let's update this revenue that's estimated for the fairgrounds to be $5,000. It's going to be a really successful event. And then we will save this and close out of here. Now you're going to notice that this 5,000 updated right away, which is impressive. This doesn't always happen that fast. So if yours doesn't, then what we can do is right click on the file name at the top here and then go down to refresh. So this will then update the embedded Excel file that you have in your OneNote. Tip number 10 is loop components are now available within OneNote. So let's go to the insert tab loop components, I'm going to go ahead and select a voting table. If you are new to loop, then it is Microsoft's new collaborative app that has a very modern feel to it and can be an alternative to OneNote for note taking. So if you would like to learn more, then you can check out my other video linked 